Hello TV Land, it's your boy Free Nexar Joe. Ready to once again get Kraken. All right, all right, all right, all right. It is a glorious and wonderful Monday afternoon as I record this. I'm running just a tad late because, well, let's just say I uh, was preparing a treat for my honey buddy. <clears throat> during my training session. Yes, yes. Still raw, but working on it. But, as you can see, I haven't even set up my environment correctly yet, or laid it all out as I normally do. And that's going to be kind of reflective of what's going to happen today, which is not a whole much. Not, not, not a whole much. Not a whole lot. Not much. Not much at all. Um, very little. No, that's not true. Um, so let's go ahead and start sorting things out, and the first thing we're going to do, win, escape. That was not right. Uh, can I reduce? All right, I can reduce. That's fine. Well, lower resolution, technically. Reduce the size of this window. That's fine. Is the G appearing anywhere? No. Okay. Now, normally this is the time of day where I uh, ramble on for a bit with my spiel. Spiel, that's a good word. As is schlamazel. And schlemiel. Schlamazel, schlemiel, I don't know. Not well versed in the Hebrew. I don't know, is it Hebrew or Jewish? I would say Jewish slang. I don't know if it's slang. It could be a formal word for all I know. Um, okay, that's laid out, that's laid out, that's laid out. But anyway, I had a whole spiel. Um, and quite frankly, if I launched it right off the start, I could probably take up the entire video. But on the one hand, I've kind of forgotten it, so we'll have to track back through to see if we can follow my line of thinking. And I'm not going to say it's very... Uh, it, it is the definition of tangential. But I think it's also a good thing to follow because, as I said, I'm actually going to go ahead and just finish up the package upgrades. And if you've been paying attention the past couple episodes, you see how long that NPM install takes. So I'm going to have to have something to talk about while I'm running it. Now, to show better value to my potential customers, ideally I would just do that off camera and show something else to record. But, um, well, it has to be done anyway. And not all work is glamorous. Not all work is showy. Some work is very, you just sit and wait and make sure things work. But speaking of things to work, where do we leave off? We left off yesterday. I had just done the install, the NPM install for the package upgrades for the Bell Music School, my one actual well, pseudo client. So we need to verify that it works, and I did not verify that it worked after the camera stopped rolling. Okay. All right, well, hmm. Oh, yeah, all right. It helps if I go into the right directory. CD project, poj, pro, my, my pro, projects. And I am, I'm not gonna say that I'm pow, but I have a distinct lack of depth in my clients list for now dash bella music school ls npm start start that up okay so what was my line of thinking gonna be so naturally i was going to start off with what a wonderful and glorious day because it is wonderful and glorious it's a uh, i mean a little cloudy but you can still see the blue sky and the temperature's real nice got a nice breeze not as good as it was on Saturday or Sunday. I'd say it's probably like five degrees higher in the low 80s, which, I mean, for some is perfect, but for Freelancer Joe, 77 degrees all the way. 77, low humidity. I might go up to 79 or 80, but you gotta have a nice breeze. Low humidity and a nice breeze. But anyway, I was going to comment upon such a beautiful day. 
Um, from there, I was going to make light of the fact that that still wasn't stopping people from being idiots on the road. And then I was going to go into more about, well, I mean, they're always idiots, but more idiotic. Not idiotic enough to cause accidents, or at least not on my route home. Knock on wood or not fiber, particle board, or whatever this is. I know, I'm pretty certain it's not wood wood, as in a nice mahogany or oak desk. Pretty cheap, too. Relatively cheap. So when I was looking into standing desks, and I'm not actually standing right now, but this is a standing desk. And uh, at my work work, we have an actual Veridesk. Thick bad boy, sturdy as hex. And I looked at the prices for that, and I was like, 200 bucks. Now, if you have a permanent home office, and you have no intentions of moving anytime soon, that's perfectly fine. Oh, okay. So it looks like I was going to have to rerun the install anyway. I included custom scroll bars in this? And React Slick? And Slick CSS? Huh. Knock me over with a feather. I was totally unaware of that. Oh. Uh, so we have React Slick. I bet you that's just some leftover stuff, to be honest. <clears throat> hmm. Sudo npm install. No, sudo. I mean, I could run the individual. Fine. I'll go ahead and run the individual commands as opposed to running the full install. Just write this one out. But don't think you're going to escape the opportunity for me to run this entire thing again. Just not for this particular project. Alright. Alright, so I was commenting on people not being as idiotic, but they're still idiots. Hmm. And somehow, I made the leap from that. Okay. Alright, yeah. Then I was going to talk about how I took... No small amount of pleasure in when idiots get their comeuppance. Now, you would say, well, Freelance Joe, that, that doesn't sound very, uh, very noble of you. And you're always talking about how great and wonderful you are. And it is true. I am great and wonderful. But I never said I was a good man. <laughs> yes, I'd never qualify as Captain America, unfortunately. I am just a great man, not a good man. <clears throat> and I do take delights, eh, not in the tragic misfortune of others, but, you know, it's kind of like, you see somebody doing something stupid. And, like, if you tell them that it's pretty stupid and you really should stop doing it, and they do it anyway, and they get their comeuppance, I mean, you're supposed to feel bad for them? Here, here's, here, here's the thing, right? They do something stupid and they get their comeuppance, right? Okay, so one... They'll learn from it, all right? That's the best case scenario, okay? Two, let's say they don't learn from it. Let's say, however, your mockery of them causes them to reconsider and not do it again. Hey, win-win in those two scenarios, all right? And three, they don't learn from it, and they don't learn from the mockery, and they repeat the same stupid mistake anyway. So you might as well enjoy it, because either way, I mean, it's still up to them, so if... You know, why would you feel bad if they're going to be stupid? I I just don't see it. Uh, and then of course, if somebody has the misfortune of a particular circumstance, you know, you can't really take glee in that. I mean, just, when bad luck happens, bad luck happens. I mean, even if they're kind of kind of a jerk, I mean, I try not to hold back against people. I mean, I hold being a jerk against them, but, you know, 
when their own jerk jerkishness causes the jerkish results. Uh, I really don't feel so bad about that. And yet, you would think then, okay, now here's where the next segue. So, if I feel that way, you know, then I should love, like, reality TV or something, right? Because people are acting stupid all the time. Oh, look, it's coming up. It's coming up. All right. Yes. Glad to see that still comes up. We still got the parallax effect. Uh, we still got that. Navigation still works. And prime inspection. Do we still have... And it's kind of slow. Uh, the camera froze. And the browser froze. And we have something intensive going on. All right, the browser's back. That's good, but I look like I'm trying to make myself throw up. Why do I look like I'm trying to make myself throw up? All right, that that does this come up and right, that comes up so let's see if i can make myself stop looking like wow i look really stupid there <laughs> let's try let's try and make myself look less stupid i know it's a it's a difficult task somebody as great as i am when i make a fool of myself uh, it takes just as much effort to make myself look less foolish. All right, so this is this is the script. That's good. That's good. So now what I have done is I have proven that I have upgraded the packages for this. Have I? Let's double check. We got Babel Seven, I mean Studio I Three. Yes, yes, that's good. Um, alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Now, so that only really leaves, that only leaves my demo, my, yeah, my demo project. And I had previously mentioned that I probably was not going to bother with updating it. But I have since changed my mind. And that is because, hold on, let me find my install, there we go. So, um, like for example, I had been playing around with Cognito, but I placed that within my sidebar template. It's not really the best place for it, because I need to pull it out and put it back in somewhere else for later use. And it, hurt, it occurred to me that I originally was using my demo as a demonstration of my basic competency, but I can also use it as my playground for when I want to incorporate new things. So I need to make sure, in fact, in fact, this upgrade should have been done on the demo folder first, because if that blows up, then everything else still works. But then again, I had everything checked in the Git, so, you know, it's not all that bad either way. But yeah. All right. Ah, uh, but before I do that, let me go ahead. All right. So the idea is is that I'm gonna upgrade the packages for my demo, then move my Cognito stuff that I have in the sidebar template over into the demo. I suppose at some point I'll have to make an episode about that, but that's when I get to play around with it some more. All right, 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 all right. Uh, uh, Babel, uh. So these are the three files I'll need to make sure I get updated. But here, get stat, it status, no, get status. Get status, I'm gonna head by commit, get commit, dash am, package upgrade. Get push. It's going to ask me for the password. Uh, halfway through it, I decided to make sure that I'm not on mute. Yeah, I'm smart. I'm a professional. It's true I am for both. Very true. Okay, so what are we doing? We have... 
committed, committed the changes. All right, that's good. That's solid. Let me get my red mic in here. I like the red. The red is good. If you can't tell what my current color scheme is, well, maybe you're not necessarily paying attention. Or you're colorblind, in which case, it's just gray, right? All right. Uh, let's see. CD back here. LS. So the final one is demo. Oh, actually, you know, I don't think demo even has. Demo doesn't even have an install. I built it from scratch. Scritch. Wow. Actually, let's start it up and see what it looks like. Okay, wait. So I was talking about stupidity. And then I was talking about, well, then that would make Freelancer Joe a fan of reality TV. And the thing is, no, I'm not. Because one, it's people posturing. They're acting stupid to try and make an impact. And two, the thing is about stupidity in real life is generally swiftly rewarded, right? But I'm not saying it's all scripted, but it is controlled in reality TV. So somebody does something stupid that should get them immediately kicked off. And the producer is like, no, but they're going to get such a good reaction. We're going to keep them around so they don't kick them off. So, you know, posturing, controlled, not a fan of that. In fact, Freelancer Joe has not watched a lot of TV. I don't remember the last time I've watched commercial TV. I just binge everything. Anything I want to watch, I binge. Uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime Video. Um, okay, and then I was going to segue from that to something else. But, so as we can see, uh, my demo comes up. And, okay, so I had navigation, route, state, and changes. Okay. So that's where I left off. So now let's go ahead and do the package upgrade for this. So that means we have to switch folders to UI demo. All right. And yeah, oh wow, I haven't even opened. Whoa, I haven't even used, or is this, hmm, I don't know. All right, so as you can see, I've got the Babel RC, which has the old configurations for Babel. I've got the package JSON, which uh, oh, it doesn't even have Babel. Oh, okay. Wow, that's when I was still kind of working things together. All right, and it doesn't even have, so this predates my template setup. It doesn't even have an install script. So, let's go ahead and close all these up. And where did the, I think it's top level. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. New file, install.sh, and we just, Cut and paste this entire thing. Natch. And the package.json. We just include all the dependencies. Pretty certain those get overridden anyway. Well, not pretty certain. I have a guess that they do. But uh, are those dev dependencies? Yeah, dev. I don't have dependencies technically because I do not expose this as a library. This is just purely for development sake, so. And then we change the Babel configuration. Da, 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 Babel tree. All right. Noise. Hmm. Hmm. This is my old readme, wasn't it? No, it wasn't even that. Uh, you know, I'm gonna have to. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and see if it. Uh, clear history. Hyperup chmod. Yeah, here we go. Bing! 517. And sudo dot slash install. 
Goddess H. Will it finish before time runs out? Or will you get to see another episode about package upgrades? Well, I mean, if it does, well, when it does finish, all I'm going to do tomorrow is just start it up and then we can move on to something else. And that will probably be the style for uh, the sidebar, the color scheme. <clears throat> okay, so I was talking about reality TV and what I wanted to binge, or what I watched, I would just binge. And then I was trying to think, well, what have I watched recently? Um, that was new. And I was actually kind of starving for content um, this past weekend almost. I think the last new thing before this weekend I had watched was Voltron. And that was like a couple months ago with the latest season. And, but then I found... Uh, what was it? Was it uh, Dropkick on My Devil? Dropkick on My Devil. Anime. Japanese Natch, obviously. Anime. Based on a manga. I'm not familiar with... Not familiar with it at all previously. And... Is it good? Is it great? Is it awesome? It is... A very niche thing, I would say. Hmm. Definitely niche as far as Western audiences go. I mean, if you've seen those wacky Japanese commercials and it tickles your fancy, then this is probably the series for you. It it has a framework for a story, but there is not really an overarching story from episode to episode. Um it's just, you know, you have these characters with this particular background, which is not fully explained, in this universe, which is not fully explained, and, you know, just wacky hijinks, I mean, of just the characters doing their character things, and all in the wacky hijinks, and uh, I don't necessarily want to say the Japanese style, though. It definitely has a Japanese flavor, but I'm not sure... Where this niche, I know it's niche as far as Western tastes go. I don't know where that niche, whether or not it's niche in Japan. You know, we see those wacky commercials on YouTube and on the internet. But you got to wonder if that has general mass appeal to Japanese audiences or just, you figure they probably do targeted advertising too. But then again, Japanese, supposedly a very homogenous culture. So, you know... Uh, it's one of those things I probably should ask my sister. She lived in Japan for a number of years. Uh, first as one of those English tutors. It was part of her college degree. Majored in Japanese. And then she was also um, some sort of exchange program between cities. So she was working... I forgot where as for what. So she would have much more insight. Uh into the culture than I would. She actually works for Capcom, I believe, right now in San Francisco. <laughs> Lucky. It's kind of funny. I mean, I mean, when I was in like high school slash college, I mean, working for a video game company, a Japanese video game company with time in Japan, I mean, that would be the bomb thing for me. My little sister was never very good at video games, ended up doing it. <laughs> I like to think it was my influence, though, that kind of kind of set her down that path. But <clears throat> as we all know, I do tend to think that the world revolves around me, often or not. Ah, but that wasn't even... I would say that's like two-thirds of the spiel I had kind of going in my head. Because then I was going to go on to the fact that as much as I would like, as much as I think that I appreciate Japanese things, and then I'm also aware enough to understand there's probably a whole lot about Japanese culture that I really don't appreciate. I'm not going to tell off the top of the my cursory understanding that, you know, their whole groupthink thing just wouldn't work too well for me. And, of course, because of that, they tend to have a more conservative view towards outsiders in general. So as much as I would like to spend time in Japan, 
Uh, one, my current situation wouldn't allow for it. And two, you know, you'd always be an outsider. Well, no, I, you know, if uh, you know somebody from one culture goes into another culture, it doesn't matter how much time they spend there; they're always going to be an outsider, regardless. But depending upon that culture, you could feel a lot, even more of an outsider. Which actually really wouldn't bother me too much. But the problem is, it goes the other way too. That culture might find it particularly grating to have an outsider there for such an extended period of time. So, you know, if you're a guest, you have to know when you're about to overstay your welcome. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, even though I am, I'm not going to say socially awkward, although I am, uh, not socially tone deaf per se, uh, I'm not the most socially adept, but even I can understand that causes a problem. I might not pick up on when I have gone past that point, but I can understand that that causes a problem, which is a shame. I'd love to spend so much time. Just, uh, you know, the food, the cities, the two things, the big two things, right? One is a cherry blossom festival. That would be so great. Just walking around with the cherry blossoms all swirling around. You, you go get the grilled squid on the stick. I don't think I tried the goldfish fashion, goldfish catching, though. They don't have that physical dexterity. Um, and then, uh, the hot springs, especially in the, uh, the mountains where it's snowing, be so awesome. Wow, this is coming up pretty quickly. Surprisingly quickly. We might be able to get it to start up before the time. But even, my spiel goes on even further than that as far as Japan goes. Because then, we're going to go into the remarkable recovery that they made, that they made. And this says a lot that, you know, the only country, you know, in the world to have experienced a nuclear attack, too. And yet within 40 years after said nuclear attack, they were like, you know, the boogeyman of, uh, of the corporate uh, or you know, the uh, capitalist world, like, taking over everything after 40 years. That says a lot. It says it's a testament to two things. One, of course, is just their particular work ethic. Remarkable, although it's kind of come back to bite them in the rear end, unfortunately. And then two, of course, the general fury of uh, uh, corporate America. Which, I mean, you kind of understand. This is multifaceted, I mean, there was no other industry around in the world, so they were able to build up such a tremendous lead. And you also factor in the American people had just fought that world war, so, you know, they might want to take it easy. But, you know, there's taking it easy, and then there's just completely not giving a damn about the future. <laughs> just assuming everything is going to keep going the same way it is. Yeah. Uh, you can say, oh, American greed. It's like, eh, that's kind of human nature, believe it or not. Not believe it or not. It's surprising how often humanity, any human in particular, and humanity in general, just gets stuck in that rut of thinking everything will be the same. And that's why I have my weekly drinks with Joe, and why I do the Week in Review. And you can see I'm already kind of getting stuck in a rut. At least I'm now, I'm having the conversation that I need to make changes. And admittedly, this is a change that doesn't seem that big, but it's something I've been talking about. Let's say it was holding me back, but you, you get all these little things kind of dragging you down. And then eventually, you knock out enough big ones, you say, okay, I move on now. And I think it'll finish just as we hit the 30 minute mark. So... If you join me tomorrow, the first thing you're going to see is me starting up my demo again. And I do hope that you do join me, at least for that, and then move me on to something else. Although I'm still kind of stuck in the rut. And maybe, if I remember, I will continue my spiel. Actually, I'm going to write that down, where, I, where to pick up at. 
because this is a good spiel. See, it just finished, but I'll take it a few more minutes. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you find this episode, well, it's not educational per se, and not even entertaining. Well, the Ramblings of Joe. I really should have saved this for like a Drinks with Joe, but it, it's such a good spiel. Thank you for joining me. Comments and suggestions in the box below. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I hope that you join me again next time. And that in the meantime, you take care and God bless.